Thank you for coming. Everyone knows the plot, yes? This is a pretty simple statement, but it's pretty cool. I understand, I will never understand. That hit me very strongly. It doesn't matter where, but it was in a tent in Tiruvannamalai when I was going to a satsang there. And I knew I was never going to ask another question because I realized I will, I understand, I will never understand. It's very good. And I hope somehow, slowly and quickly, we arrive there. And then you hit another, there's a number of them. And, uh, it's sort of like a door that was left open and a lot of air and shit was let out is closed, yes? Yeah. So your interest and attention is now mostly rooted in the presence of interest and attention instead of going through these doors of trying to find an answer as the answer, you know? This is the funny thing. If Ramana's statement was true, that being ourselves reality, uh, the greatest mystery being ourselves reality is reality wanting to attain reality. Yeah. So how could that possibly happen? How could reality want to attain reality? It must be taking itself to be something else. Yes. And there, I think we are that which it's taking itself to be right here. Yeah. The action figure. And it's sort of like the astronaut mistakes himself for the space suit. And then, or the big camera looks through the small camera. Someone reminded me of this one when I was back east, and it's I like it. It's a good one. The uh, there's the idea of when I was in Asia, you would buy like this little cardboard uh, box with a lens and with one roll of film. You had like twelve pictures, and you would it would be like five bucks. You'd use it you would just point and hope, you know, because you couldn't really see out of the lens. You would use it, and then at the end of the day, you'd go to the pharmacy, they develop the pictures, you never see the little cardboard camera again. Toss it right out. The pictures what were valuable, not the cardboard camera. So, and in, in this idea, there's, there's that cardboard camera, and then there's a very large camera with HD, 360 degree surround sound, a mobile tripod, you know, that's solar driven, let's say, moves around on its own, doesn't have to be placed anywhere. And it sees this little camera and it decides to look through it. And as, as it's looking through it, it seemingly forgets it's the big camera. And now it takes all the qualities of the cardboard camera to be its qualities, yeah? So immediately all of that, which was readily available as a large camera is now completely forgotten as the smaller camera. The most the smaller camera can think of the big camera is some far off possibility if I do this or don't do that, yes? But it's almost an impossibility all the while being the large camera. <clears throat> but it doesn't matter because it's living as if it's the small camera. Yeah. So, and what happens? It decides, I gotta, it starts seeing, I'm not getting the pictures, there's a big thumb in every picture, everything like that. I got to get some lenses. So let's get the high, best lens, Nikon lenses. And we'll put it on the camera and we'll increase the quality of how the camera is seeing. But it doesn't. Why? Because the first lens you're looking through is the plastic lens. Yeah? And if you're looking through the plastic lens, that's the first lens, it doesn't matter how polished the next lenses are, it's not going to improve the quality of the scene. Because you're seeing through the lens, you're going to see through the high quality lens through the plastic lens first. Yes. Now, if the plastic lens was put seemingly, if you were trying to get to be a super camera and you had incredible Nikon things, and then someone said, you should try this plastic lens. If you saw through the plastic lens from the Nikon lens, you'd say, that's fucking ridiculous. Can't see shit through the plastic lens, but we're not. We're seeing the Nikon lens from the plastic lens first. Yeah, and then we're wondering why it's not working. And usually you just buy more, more polishing, get a bigger one. But it's always going to be uh, interfered with because of what is the first lens, which is the plastic lens. So there it is. He's, he's spent a lot of money to increase the quality and it's not working. Someone walks in and sees the situation and 
sees the situation. Let's say it's you as awareness. And now you see the hot, the, the large camera in an impossible condition, believing it's the small camera. And then you talk about this condition, but you talk to it, to the large camera, not the small camera. Because everyone's been talking to you as a small camera. you got to fucking get better. you got to do this and that. It wasn't working. Now someone's going to talk to the large camera and say, hey, you're not the small camera. What? So the idea catches. And what happens to the large camera? It doesn't get ripped apart to separate from the small camera. It does. It's not going to get hurt or anything because it's always been the large camera. It was never the small camera, and they were never they were never connected. Yeah, he never became the small camera. He was looking through the small camera. It wasn't infecting his condition. As soon as he hears the possibility, I'm not. It's a small camera. He's not spending thousands of dollars on Nikon lenses. He just pulls away. And now he sees the small camera and he's not looking through the small camera. This is similar, yeah. So the large camera is trying to understand itself through the small camera. The small camera cannot understand what's going on. You realize you're not the small camera. That understanding holds no weight anymore and that's the clearer understanding. The clearer understanding is the system of understanding as the small camera is not equipped to pick up what we are or anything else like that. Yes, it may be equipped to get you to the store and whatever and count the change out of your pocket. So you realize I understand not from that. That's trying to understand. I understand that which I'm not will never understand. That's that's the message, literally. The message is Hope and whatever comes up to obscure that, you have this sort of fucking satsang. You know, I'm not that. Yeah. So you stop trying to understand what's going on through the small camera. You understand the small camera will never understand. That's it. Yeah. Because there's something other than the small camera. You're the big camera. And the big camera can understand it's not the small camera. Because why? It's not the small camera. And does it have a history of blowing it and longing it? No. He's never, never, ever been the small camera. He's not in the pursuit of becoming this as the small camera, the large camera. No, that's not going there. And he's not bemoaning and longing and may have hoping that he had blown it for so many years and he had become the small camera. That hasn't happened either. It was just an imaginary belief that had the large camera living as if it was the small camera, yeah? So the correction doesn't take any time because the correction isn't a correction. It's a correcting a misunderstanding, that's all. The misunderstanding that you're the camera gets corrected. One of the signs of that is, I understand, I will never understand, yeah? And in that correction, yes? The horse now is seen to be before the car. Now it's really cool because the heart, this horse has always been behind it, in, in front of the car. We just weren't seeing it that way. Yeah, just like in this case as an action figure, I come from the community of, of recovery and therefore usually to be a member of the community of recovery, you were in the solitude of addiction. Yes, so I was in the solitude of addiction and I was into the recovery thing. And uh, I, everything I understood was from what I was not then. Yeah, I was taken over. Its lens were my lens. Its thoughts were my thoughts. Its feelings were my feelings. Its behavior were my behaviors. I lived as if I was this long lasting, independent, separate thing, but I was a vehicle for addiction to express itself. Yeah. And addiction has a lot of wants and can't go to the store. Yeah. It has a lot of things it'd like to do, but it doesn't have any legs. So it sees you as transportation, and then you unwillingly or willingly are being driven by this thing. And all the while you're being driven by it, you have a story that you're the driver. Yeah, it's insane. 
sort of like the car, the truck that drove the people who robbed the bank did not rob the bank. They used it to go to the bank. The Toyota pickup had nothing to do with the bank robbery. It had that which was driving the Toyota pickup brought it to the bank. Well, what has brought us to these pitiful, incomprehensible demoralizations was not us. We did not drive ourselves there. We were driven by something, yes? So I humbly believe the really, the real addiction before all other addictions is the head, the mental activities addiction to this idea of being the doer, the thinker, the feeler, the taster, the toucher. And all of that ownership is pictured as a body. Okay? And as the Course of Miracles says, if you're into the Course, it's on page 468, I think, near the end, it says a very incredible diagnosis. The brain interprets to the body of which it is a part. What? The brain that you've been relying on to be your GPS has a pre-program already. Yeah? It's it's not wasn't meant to be your GPS. It was meant to be its GPS. Yeah? So it's going to use you to go where it wants. And then you're going to be fucking surprised. Yeah? You are, because you thought you wanted it to just go out and have fun, and then you're in jail, like at 12 at night. So something is, is doing through us what we never would have done by ourselves. To me, the original, this, uh, in time, the original addiction would be this addiction of being this doer, thinker, feel it, taste it, touch it. And so it says here, the brain interprets to the body of which it is part, and it goes, this you should know. So it's a pretty big statement in the course. It describes something and it goes, hey, this you should know that the brain interprets to the body of which it is a part, or you're gonna keep trying to understand that which can under, that can't understand. It's just gonna keep going on, yeah? And I did tons of su certain substances, the cocaine the most, not one time in all my delirium did I think I was cocaine or I was in the process of becoming cocaine or I was once cocaine and I was trying to return to cocaine. I had none of that ever. There was boundaries that were never crossed no matter how insane I went. Yeah, it never. I believe we are living as the drug of the head. The idea of being the doer, thinker, feel it, taste the toucher is like cocaine to an addict. And I, to me, I went super far in coke addiction, never got close to thinking I was coke. I think we're starting from there in most cases. I think most people are starting from the idea of being a long lasting, independent, separate entity. I mean, literally. And wanting to get relief from that spins off to all these other addictions. And why are they addictions? Because they don't bring a long lasting relief. They bring temporary relief, usually with terrible consequences. Yeah. And there's tons of them now. And there's tons of businesses trying to work on them. And most of them have just surrendered and said, let's just try and get less harm. They've given up of the possibility of being free from shit. I remember I went into this clinic on uh, in the Hudson, this street clinic, and I walked in. And you know when they used to have those little fire alarm blasts and everything? There was Narcan in there. They had Narcan. So if someone just died, being now they have these signs in bathrooms at bars. If you're doing coke in here, if something happens, we got the Narcan behind the fucking bar. This is fucking insane. Yeah. So they basically just less harm. Let's just you know, let them die here instead of there. It's just insane. So to me, this addiction, its greatest strategy, it has its addiction seen as your addiction. Yeah. So if the head goes, I feel weird, you go, I feel weird. You don't know how you're feeling usually because you're out to lunch mostly. So the head informs you your basic condition right now based on it interprets everything to the body and the body represents the idea of being the doer, thinker, feel it, taste it, touch it. So the bondage of self reinforces the bondage of self and you are the activity of that reinforcement in a lot of 
in most cases. Yeah. Are you going to stop that? No. Are you going to see it? Yes. If you see it, you won't be moved to stop it. You'll lose interest in it. That's its killing blow. It would love you to get in, the, in a, a wrestling match and maybe three out of five and wrestle and vanquish and kill this thing. What really does it is when it's irrelevant. When you lose interest in it, it flips it out. It flips out, yes? And the first thing that usually goes, I've noticed, is the GPS role. You stop listening to its directions. So you'll see uh, it says left, left. You never go left anymore. And it's one of its main fucking jobs. The GPS drops. It's just a matter of time. The dominoes are going to fall because... If you're, if you're not listening to it, it can't produce the effects it needs. Yeah. Do you go, you don't yet go to jail for your thoughts. You don't yet go to jail for how you feel, but you do go to jail for what happens to you. If you do something, like in the court system, some person could drive you crazy for eight years and finally you do something the, the, the judicial system, the prison system, just sees it from that point, what you did to that person. Not the abuse for the eight years, but you bit them on the back shoulder or something like that, yes? So action, the head is trying to compel us to do action. When you take action, you're seen as the actor, and then guilt and shame and pride and shit like that can pile on, yes? And I met people now They've been free from the bondage of addiction for 40 years, and they're still bound by the past because they were, they're still cast as the doer of the shit that they did not do. If you have ever been driven by this parasite of alcoholism and recovered, you know you were driven. It's quite clear you weren't cho you know, choosing the shots. And the funny thing is, it's not difficult to see because millions of us end up at the same three parking spaces. It should fucking set off an alarm. You know what I mean? Because each one has a unique story of how they got there, but they get to the same fucking place. So there must be millions of cars being driven by one driver. And the program tells you, it's, you you've been driving uniquely. It's all, it's just, if you just take a second with the understanding of non-duality. What you used to be obscured by, you'll see right through. If you just sit with it, yeah? If you just sit with the fact that I understand, I will never understand. Are you gonna understand something? Yes, that, yeah? And are you gonna understand things during out the day? Yes, but this idea, I understand, I will never understand, this point points out to the fallacy or the failness of the system we rely on, yeah? The mental logic doesn't get it. The mental logic, every time it dreams about its own absence, it's present. Yeah, It's like that party that's great and you get there and it sucks. It's just trying to still fucking figure out how can I get there and still have the party great? It won't give up. I've seen it with addiction. You ran in the wall, there was plenty of evidence to be convinced you just backed up and you went another direction. Yeah, there's spiritual addiction. You can see it. There's a lot of addiction isn't the package that the addiction is in isn't the extent of the addiction. It can be everywhere. Yes. So this is drive to get out of what we're not in and trying to get into what we're not out of. Yeah. And the message of non-duality is just that being ourselves reality. The seeker is the sort. No seeker with a big space with all this stuff going on and then all the sorts, yeah? Which always change the sorts, but the seeker never does. Just like when you had relationships with, with gals, 10, 15 of them, when I looked at them and let's say they sort of failed on some level, the one constant in all those relationships was me, yeah? The whole thing, why the seeker is, is failing in the sort is the seeker. Not that you haven't done enough or gone enough or, you know, flew enough. It's just that you can't arrive at where you already are. And that's the last thing the head will believe, that you are already are where you are. It wants to arrive here. It will sign up for lifetimes of practice to become something that it already is. 
to hide the fact that it already is. So when does it stop right now? Yeah. One of these things can hit you, just like when I was sitting in that satsang and I knew I was never going to ask another question because listening to satsang showed me the futility of looking for what I already am. It just made, it just ended it. Yeah. And then other things fell. And these dominoes were like colored dominoes, but you saw a lot of dominoes got knocked down and all you did is hear them. You didn't notice them that much, but there's a lot of domino strings, but they usually set, they usually start with one big one. And when they fall, there's a like, you hear a lot of, of the forest fall, yes? And then what happens? You, you lose interest that you can never do through interest. You can't lose interest with interest. You lose interest. You just recognize I'm never going to get it. And you actually get a modicum of understanding that you are it. And then all the absurdity. Like Hoang Po could have a book, one sentence. Whatever can be perceived cannot be perceived. And then while you were hearing that, just go to your head and listen to it for a minute. And it's based on the exact opposite. Whatever can be perceived is what's perceived. Yeah. Now, for some reason, I trust Hang Po a lot more than my head. <laughs> I just do. Yeah. So when Hang Po says it, I hear it. And when my head says the other shit, I don't listen to it. Something shifted, yes. So one little sentence of non-duality can keep you on the straight and narrow. It's that easy. You don't need 45 minutes. You need a little like, what? Stop in because now you don't lose, leave the vicinity in your little mental world. You're always here. First, one of the first things that went with me was the, that drive and all the businesses and books about how to get into the moment. I just realized it can't be out of a moment. It can't be out of a moment. So why the hell would I re read a book about how to get into the moment? Most people would rather read a book, how to get out of the moment. I'll tell you the truth, because that's their drive. They're trying to get out of this fucking awkward moment all the day. And they're stuck here. Why? Well, because they can't get out of the minute moment. Yeah. So how to be really in the moment. How to really, really be in the moment. The third edition. If you haven't gotten it yet, idiot. No. So these things fell. Never thought about again. Never looked at a, you know, on the infinite scroll. Oh, an, an, an amazing way to not only get in the moment, but stay temporarily. <laughs> How long is the temporarily? It's all based on you. I'll just give you the information. You give me the money. Adios. Yeah. So this is beautiful because can't get out of the moment. So why would you want to be in the moment? Yeah. So you actually start seeing that the head is trying to get out of what it's not in and trying to get into what it's not out of. Yeah. People would spend years becoming what they are and yet have no interest in hearing being what they are. <laughs> there's a lot of interest in becoming because there's that eternal hope that they'll be there to get it. They want. I want to witness my own demise or whatever, my, uh, my own dissolution into the void. I want to be there, right? <laughs> or at least have a camera crew. Uh, it's, a, it's a stubborn fucking idea. It'll go really, really far. That this is beautiful, man. Just realize you're never going to get it. Yeah, that would bring that would a lot of people if they were seeking that would bum them out. But if you've heard this message, it doesn't because it implies the fact that you are it. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? Someone who wants to get something and then they hear they're never going to get it, fucking frustrated. But what happens if they get another message? You are what you're looking for. That's why you're never going to get it. Great. Yeah. That makes so much more sense. The other thing is frustrating and demands more, you know, working and shit. 
this is just completely disarming. You are already what you're looking for. It's actually so close. What's looking is what you're looking for. What's what's looking is what you're looking for. Do you see it? What's looking is what's looking. And now we're trying to use that as a looking for it. Yeah. So what's looking is what we are looking for as the imaginary we. That's what's blinding us. So where would you want to do? Gain interest in the what's looking or better lose interest in the you that's looking for? I would say losing interest in the you that's looking for because you're already what's looking. Why do you need to more, why would you be more excited about the complete excitement of being what you are? You'd be more interested in losing interest in what you're not, yeah? Because you're not that. Why would you pour interest in what you already are? Yeah. People, you know, I had this trouble in LA. I didn't, but the guy who was working the door came over to me and said, hey, Paul, I had all these people come up to me and say similar, the same thing. And I said, what? And they said, well, this guy, everything this guy says is going over my head. And I went, great. And he went, what? And I said, great. I'm not aiming at them. The last thing I want to get to is them. I want to get over them, under them, around them. <laughs> Those, they're, the, they're the fucking obstacle. That which is seeking to hear the message is the obstacle towards the message. Yeah. So I said, yeah, that's where I'm aiming. I can't throw over the head of everywhere because I can't, but I can throw over the head of you because you're a defined little action figure. And I know how you're not going to reach 20 feet, throw it up there because we're not speaking to you, Rosalind. We're speaking to what you are. We want what you are to look at Rosalind. I don't want Rosalind to keep looking for what you are because that's not working. Rosling looking for what you are is reinforcing the you that is looking, which is what you're not. It's a simple diagnosis. It sounds like a good move to be looking for what you are, but in this case, it isn't. Yeah. So there you go. So yes, and I know I get this all the fucking time. The funny thing is, when it's coming through, it makes total sense to me. Blows my mind. It can make you start feeling like an alien here. There's no one sort of agreeing with you at all. It's just like putting up with you and shit. What? You gotta, well, just try that. I understand I will never understand. I understand I will never understand. That's a good one. Yeah? Yeah? What's trying to understand is not you. Incredible, eh? Because if what you are is what you are, why would it want to understand what you are? It's like looking at a, I remember I was at that place, uh, the bookstore in San Rafael. <clears throat> they had all the spiritual books there. Remember the place? Yeah, we used to give talks there. And in that Buddha room, which was cool. Though. And there was one night I came out to get the, you know, the money for doing the job. And there was a book, 900 page book on consciousness. Now, why would consciousness want to read 900 pages about itself? We, we're conscious. Do we need to read a book of consciousness for 900 pages? It just made no fucking sense. Yeah. What's reading a book about consciousness does not believe it's consciousness. It believes it's a fucking body. It wants to be conscious, but it wants to be conscious as a body. Instead of being conscious of the body, it wants to be conscious as the body. Yeah, and therefore it probably would like a 1200 page book on consciousness with 800 lessons that would gradually bring you to a higher platform as the action figure. You would be more conscious, yeah? But all the while we're consciousness.
And so would it be helpful to make a like a cliff note thing on the book? No. <laughs> because they would still be thinking that, that which would be reading it to try to speed up the process would be the long lasting independent separate entity. Yes? And so wanting to be a non-thing is being used to reinforce that you're a thing. The great desire not to be a body can only be entertained as a fucking body. That which is not a body does not worry about not being a body. Only a body idea wants relief from the body idea. This is that this isn't one phenomena. It's a pattern. You'll see it. If you drive down this road of mental logic, you're going to fall into holes. And with the non-duality message, you'll see you'll there'll be wealth and value in those holes. The mental logic is full of fucking holes. Yeah. It's nice when you have it get on the road to find out what you're going to do is to find out a lot about the mental logic. That's what you're going to find out. And you're going to find out it's failed, has no fucking clue what's actually going on. It's in there to reinforce the story of the, pri the primary story, which is you're a body. That's what it's, that's its drive. Yeah. So here you go. Non-duality. Beautiful. Beautiful. People practicing non-duality paths you know they're probably going to have non-duality spas with baths salt baths fucking some tantra non-duality stuff like that so you have no guilt or, or blame for anything you did in the 10 days you were there or something like that. they'll try to like, the head will try to use it for something like they it always does that's the beauty of it what's the head trying to use non-duality it's one of the greatest burlesque shows ever it's like a coyote trying to get that do desert tortoise's food in, in meat and the desert tortoise the tortoise isn't coming out and the coyote tries to look at everything and the coyote much wiser than us leaves when it's not getting anything yeah but the great news about non-duality is not getting anything you do not get anything you don't already have yeah, it's beautiful. So really, the package is nothing. You get nothing, so then you see yourself as everything. Instead of seeing yourself as nothing and trying to get everything, it switches it around. And maybe this logic will work better than the other logic. It has with me. Yeah. And I think it's seamless, to tell you the truth. I haven't seen any... Sometimes I would listen to people share at events where they had other people share. And I would sit there with my eyes closed and I'd listen to them. And they had a beautiful beginning in non-duality and then the rest was doing something. And they hung, it would be like they'd hang themselves. Yeah, they couldn't leave nothing alone. They had to fucking try to make it something. And yeah, and then they'd be hung. And that's why I didn't want to look because I felt embarrassed, so to speak, you know. I'd be sitting there going, uh oh here it comes. And we're going to do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. You get nothing. That's the great news. Yeah. It stops you from wanting something. That's the great news. How are you going to appreciate nothing if you still, if that which is trying to grasp, and the thing is, it doesn't stop the grasping. It tells you it's not you. That's the great news. Because the first thing, the first misunderstanding I ran into when shit was starting to be revealed is I thought there was more for me to do. Yeah. So most spirituality was a call to arms. Yeah. I recognized something it was explaining. I go, yeah. All right. And then they imply, well, there's something to do. Yeah. This doesn't do that. It says it describes everything. And because it's not you, it's not worthy of doing that much for it, with it. Yeah. You just see it. It could be an incredible eyesore. Now it's just, it doesn't mean that much. Yeah. And the idea that the only way you're going to have peace is no thought, no thought. No, you coexist with thoughts. Yeah. It's like a radio station playing in another room. You don't have much interest listening to it anymore you realize how you heard it so loudly was because you were interested in it. 
if it's if you're not interested in it, you don't even hear it mostly. Yes. So basically, you start seeing your role in everything. And then you see what else is role is in everything and you see it is not you. And there's a loss of interest. Now you travel lighter as the exact thing you were trying to trying to travel lighter as. Not not trying to be, be more of this, but through less of this. Yeah. And I think it was the best move for the body, to tell you the truth. The body just can't handle being the center of the universe. It just cannot. I mean, to have thousands of thoughts and attention and interest going to this body, it's going to fart, B.O., everything like this. Things happen. It does much better without that much surveillance, I feel. Yeah. Just like if you worked in construction and the, the owner of the place was hanging over your head, watching every second of your work, you usually did a bad job. Yes. If they they'd split and have some confidence, you you probably do a great job. Yeah. Now they thought they were going to make you do a great job by surveilling you, but it did produce the exact opposite. This is what the head does. Yes. It's incredibly magnifying when it concentrates on something. It usually neuters or burns the thing or mutates the fucking thing. Yeah. And then you don't see that process, and you just see you believe. Just like illness, I think, uh, like for me, I remember I had trouble with my stomach early on and I wanted to get relief like everyone would. And so one of the things I got introduced to was macrobiotics. And I had a sec I had an interview with the head dude, Michio Pishi. The only thing I remember from that interview was don't eat onions, the last things he said to me. And there I went and I practiced macrobiotics, which is you don't drink much any water, bunch of tea. And I would go in a sauna. I would not sweat. 200, I just fucking dry as a bone. And mostly my day was centered on my intestinal, so my small intestine, because I was so obsessed. Yeah. And then I realized my wanting to be healthy is making me very fucking ill. That's a trip. Yeah. And I had a few more of those examples, and then that was the end of that. Yeah, but I, the sense was it had to help, but it wasn't helping. Yeah, yeah. So it was about sending it around the corner for a long period of time. Like in recovery, we do it through service and stuff, because you realize there's the head is being orbited with a lot of interest and attention. And you're not going to talk yourself out of that Saturn ring. You got to do something. So you do service, and the event takes the attention and interest out of that orbit, and you feel what? You feel available and present. Yeah. And then the story is you feel available and present, and then the orbit goes. But now you've had a sample. You have a sample that if you get out of something, there's a sense of availability and presence. When you're in something, it's seeking and having an incredible drive to get available and present. But when it's sent around the corner, I feel exactly the thing that it's attempting to make a goal for me to arrive at. I am already here. I'm inherently built as present and available, which what does that make me of service? It does, of service. And so for it used to happen with me. I'd be here, this idea of Paul, and I would do service, and I'd be relieved from that idea of Paul. And then the idea of Paul would claim to be the one who did the service, and then there would be the, the unease of the idea of Paul. But then one day, it happened, and I saw the whole chain differently. I saw where I start is the presence. And I'm available, and I'm conscious of Paul this idea of Paul. I didn't start from Paul wanting to become available present. I saw I was present, therefore available, and I was present to see there was a Paul, an idea of Paul, let's say. And that, that was the day when doing service became being of service. Yeah, this is what can happen, but it can't happen to the you. Yeah, yeah. so... It, all right, thank you. We're not leaving yet. <laughs> we have this is a 
One day here, this is an interesting story. Some of you were here. We had a friend of ours, Jim Cook, great guy. And I had gotten an email from his daughter telling me that Jim had passed away. Yes. And here we were, this window, there's a big window here. And I was telling the group that Jim Cook passed away. And who walks by the window but Jim Cook? <laughs> so Jim Cook's come in here. And I said, Jim, you're the first person to hear about your own death. Yeah. And it was one of these, it was one of the memorable moments in this fucking place because I had misconstrued it was him sent me a thing about his daughter, not the daughter about him. <laughs> yeah. So here's Jim Cook. We're describing, oh, what should we do? Have a memorial or something? And here he comes. Hey, Jim, we were going to plan a memorial for you. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And uh, we've had so many people come in and out of this room. And we hope that when they left, they, they went out a little lighter. Yeah. And I hope they got into the habit of traveling lighter. Yeah, I do. So a lot of little mini excursions have been uh, started in this little ammonia soaked room. So I'm going to miss it, actually. Not long, but this is it. But yeah, I thought we don't, you know, we don't have much going on, so we're going to try to make it an important day, the last day of the year. Yeah, yeah. They gave us a lot of shelter, and truly, they never knew we were here. <laughs> I've never been called for like a, we come here, there was funerals. Fucking a dead coffin was here. No one ever told us they were using the room for anything because they had no idea that we existed. And it went on for like 15 years. And today they have the fire department, you know, giving mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation out there. Usually it's dogs getting vaccines. Fucking 80 dogs with their owners. Sometimes it really turns the shit. They get the check every month, though. They, I know the check was always cash, but they were like, "Do you do you know that we rent a room here?" But so it's the last day. Hallelujah! Everything comes and goes. Yeah, everything comes and goes. So it's cool. Hey, uh, all right. Anyone have a question there? There's no hands up so far, but oh, there's well, a new I'm not long. I have uh well, they're all leaving now. Public bathroom. Oh, it's a free mouth to mouth they want to get out there. <laughs> uh, you gotta get it wherever you can. <laughs> they're out there. Good luck. <laughs> so uh, I, wish I had a question, Paul. All right. It's a question. Um how do you separate the truth of what you're talking about, the truth of what we're not? How do you separate that from your everyday needful things to do, mortgage to pay, the hustle of life goes on? How how do you separate, you know, the action from the truth that you're talking about? I don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Truth doesn't need to be separated from false or whatever you want to look at it that way. So truth doesn't need to be separated in quarantine to be truth. Yeah? It just precedes what appears to be false. So truth is always available at all times. And sometimes the truth can appear to be false. Yeah, so... And I don't see anyone who's going to who's doing the separating or bringing together. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But when when I say okay, when I recognize genuinely that I'm not that, I have trouble engaging in life then because I figure, well, fuck it, what's the point? <laughs> you know. Uh, that's probably that's going to be a phase. That's not going to last. Uh huh. Yeah, you're going to render unto Caesar's what Caesar's. Yeah, you'll. Yeah. You don't have to keep denying you're a Roman, you're, you're a Roman without being a Roman. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, you can go through phases and then it just sort of 
morphs into a fluidity. Oh, then she got some free food. This, this is a, this is in a luncheon, a luncheon meeting. Uh, it is now, yeah. So, yeah, that's how I would see it. Yeah, yeah. And these, I would ask, who is it that thinks they need to separate something? Because that's not. Me. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. Take mm -hmm. it back to step because it always wants to plant a flag and start everything from there. Just question that flag, which is, well, who is that? And then you'll go into no man's land or no woman's land. Yes. Yeah. It's not far. It's not a distance. It's not a distance. You're not stepping back. It's a, just a scene. Yeah. Yeah. You're not doing anything. You, the, 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 the greeting, the standard quo, the standard stuff as not you is stunning to it because it's been living on habit and and uh just laziness away and it's gotten sloppy and then you just point it out right here hey i'm not that and it just diffuses things yeah because the whole story it wants you to be concerned with is how to separate true or false it doesn't want you to look at there's no one that's fucking looking forward to that trying to figure it out yeah so it's like before it puts its tuxedo top on, you pull the pants down. So it's all getting formal, getting ready to go out. You just pull the pants down. Oh, uh, yeah, that's what you do. Instead of addressing it, oh, Mr. Tuxedo Man, you just pull, who's the tuxedo? Oh, uh, yeah. And right. then that's what you do. These things are done until they, they don't need to be done. They're done as simple suggestions, and then the obvious takes over. See, the head has been reinforcing something that's not true. That's why you constantly have to reinforce it, because it's not true. You don't have to constantly reinforce what's true. You may need to use a couple of things for a while, but the truth of it all becomes the solid space. Of, yeah, yeah. We're, used to, we're, we're applying the same thing we do with magical thinking to what actually is true. You don't make that much effort. You just see it, something, bring, and then sometimes that's it. Sometimes you have to go a little farther down the hallway, and but basically everything is finite and you're infinite. Yeah, so its hallway is going to run out and you're not. Yeah, and there's a point where you've seen enough to know what you're seeing uh, isn't something. Yeah. You've seen enough to be convinced that what you're seeing isn't true. You don't need to have a pointed out all the time. It's just now a fact in your life. Yeah. Before you see, it's not coming from what you see and then made into a fact. It's a fact, and then you're starting to see the fact, and you watch the manufacturing of things. Yeah. It's a fact before. It wants to produce a fact after, but you can see all that from a fact before you of your nature. And then there's not much, uh, the investigation doesn't last long. The house of cards, you don't have to see every shingle on the house of card. You see one or two and you know it's a house of cards. Yeah. You don't have to go through every, oh, it's just a house of cards. Everyone knows. A couple of cards tell you sufficiently it's a house of cards. Yeah. yeah. So what are you going to do? Not move in. Yeah. Right, right. So it's stopping owning those ideas or associating that way. Yes. it's It not stops, but you lose interest in it. Mm -hmm. So that, see, let's say you're a, a power resource and a lot of things have plugged into you and are sucking the juice out. And they're they're spending the juice to to light up their own little pro products and productions. What happens is that that stealing of the light is seen, and it stops the stealing of the light. Yeah, and now something that was being drained from your life is now enriching your life. Yeah, and it may enrich your life that each moment may be more than enough. You're not looking for a greater, bigger moment. You may be content and satisfied 
with what is right now. Ah, pretty cool. Yeah. And then you just travel later through whatever's going on. Yeah. Non recognized for 16 years of meetings by the church. <laughs> I would call him, hey, they go, who's this? Paul. Uh, be silent. Uh, Saturday, one o'clock. Uh, uh, you better call, call Roy. All right. There was one person that knew me somehow, vaguely. <laughs> you think you could tell us beforehand? Uh, sorry, I have an emergency. <laughs> so, so. As the first day, so the last day. <laughs> uh, yeah. Interesting. So, yeah, bro. That's helpful. Thank you. Remember, if, when you hear the word separate and this and that, you should question what's saying it. Yeah. Yeah. The head would love to reinforce the belief of separate and let's merge everything. But then all the merging is just being used to reinforce the separate. Just ask who is it that thinks that something's separate? It's not you, you know, really. You don't have to catch the thief thousands of times. You can maybe once, maybe a few times. Yeah. Maybe you get a long period of time and then you got to catch it again because it's habitual. But, but it's, you're not it's, a genu it's a genuine catch, though. I mean, right? I mean, you have to really feel that difference. The feel? Yeah, the, the feeling like, okay, I caught it. I caught that thought, but I'm not going to associate with it. So it, it, that has to be really felt, right? You can't just intellectually uh, conceive of it. But you don't even do that second part. You just say, you catch a thought. You don't say, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to disassociate, I'm going to disassociate from it. You can cut that. That's like fat on the bone. You don't have to do that. You just yeah. see. And this is the faith in awareness. The faith in what and what you are. Have faith in what you are. You may not need a lot of accompanying things to do. It may be just the quality of seeing is enough. Yeah? Especially if you've been given a, a, a non-duality understanding, because it's quite helpful. It brings... It puts into stark contrast misunderstandings that maybe regular Buddhism didn't or going to church doesn't. Yeah, The non-duality will bring shit that you have sensed to be working understanding that don't really work. It puts a contrast on it, like it, it illuminates it. It's, it's easier to see. Yeah, it, This doesn't mean it's easier to do or not do. It's just to see. That's the point. It's an awareness of, and then I don't know what else is going to happen for you. Maybe nothing, maybe you do something, who knows. But it all starts with an awareness. Of, because that's where life starts, us, I am. Yeah? Mm. Yeah. You're using the original condition to look at the other conditions that are saying they're part of the original condition. And then they get called out. And you see, I'm not that, or I'm not that. And what happens? I feel it migrates, there's a migration of interest and attention. And he didn't even know how the interest and attention was emphasized in your life. You didn't. You had no idea. But self-centeredness sees everything as how it pertains to self. And you're right. not. Yeah. Right, right. Want to have that message over and over that doesn't pertain to you? Of course not. You'd like to have information that actually pertains to you, yes? Mm. And you follow that guidance and see what happens. Hopefully you'll travel later. Yeah. And then uh, the shenanigans can go on. You just lose interest in them. So if they were going to make a eight eight act play, it'll be like a little half of an act play. Yeah, and they're going to fill up a fucking arena. It's going to be in a little room like this. Yeah, it's just, a, it's going to be downsized to the point where it can be comedic, mostly. Yeah, and you laugh at yourself. It's hilarious. Yeah, people laugh at me all day. Yeah. All right. I, I, I laugh at you all day. What? 
I laugh at you all day. Good. See, there you go. <laughs> a roll. Yeah. You are. You are. You gotta laugh about this stuff, man. People. Uh, if you've ever been in the world of addiction, it's that's the canary in the coal mine, my feeling. Mm -hmm. That's uh, the self centeredness has reached an extreme version. They're they're very obsessed with the idea of them, and that, and uh, it has a lot to share for others, but most people just categorize as them, alcoholics or addicts, but the root of it all is the same, the obsession with self. Some are more amplified than others, and you can find a lot out by about the others by the amplification. So you can learn a lot from addiction. Yeah, if you don't die, yeah, you'll have a lot to share. Because it's just a it's just a, a difference of degrees and shit, yeah. Let's say active addiction can be more flamboyant, but people are dying a slow death in this life, and uh, yeah, there's very little understanding. I feel of what's going on. Everyone thinks they know, but nothing changes, so they mustn't be correct. Yeah. Yeah. There's this court case that is uh, going on the network right now. And this is a person who, you know, there were signs that things were not, you know, going well. And they were told that this person is doing weird things with animals. And this person was studied. And, and by every, you know, like psychiatric, social, neighborhood, you know, like counselor uh, that is available within that system. And they basically, he was also a medical student. You know, like, Can you guys hear? No. Yeah. Can you Slightly. make it? Exactly. So, uh, and now that there's a court case, he's being studied again, you know, by medical uh, professionals that have to say whether he is you know, aware of what he did or not aware of what he did. And they're saying he cheated us. For all, all these years, he's cheated all these people that are in the profession of, you know, helping, so to speak. Uh, yeah, yeah, he killed people. And, and then, Oh, he killed people. And, that's, <laughs> that's an important part to have. Uh, oh, by the way, he killed people. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Like the first person you killed was the woman who turned him in, you know, for animal. What? But we can't, they can't hear you. So, so you a... it's like, so and then the conclusion of the professionals, what they are saying, yeah, it's not like we miss you know, like uh, what we are doing is obviously not doing anything. You're saying he did not let us look uh, him into the soul. That was their conclusion. Yeah. You know, like, and it's, it's like, wow, you know, it, instead of saying none of this obviously worked, you know, all the energy expenditure, you know, therapy. Of course they're not going to say that. No, no. This is unhealed healers, as the Course of Miracles says. So uh, unhealed healers do a lot, a lot of diagnosis. But they they don't bring about many cures, yeah. Because we're confined and defined by a system of thought, yes. And therefore, we can't look outside the box. And when if there's a feeling of being a person that's looking outside the box, that's still in the box. I'm not talking about how far you can see. If you are there doing the seeing, you're still in the box. So this is what happens. Self uh, cannot get out of self. So this is the relief. The real relief is to recognize there is no person that has this PhD or whatever and like that, so you can travel looser with a PhD. Yeah, and basically, uh, yeah. This is like everything 
there's fires being set all around, and yet the biggest situations never looked at. You know, we watch TV shows where there's 50 people for two years looking for one murder, where systems are murdering millions of people at the same time, and they're still at the golf courses and country clubs. So it's a very strange event here. Yeah. So to me, uh, for me, through me, as me, that's what the relief I needed was from. Yeah. So, yeah. And again, uh, yeah, we used to say a thing that I felt summed it up where there's an alien civilization sends a, a, a spaceship to study Earth and they have a 10 year endowment. They've got all these things to quantify and measure and they land in America. And after 15 minutes, they call up their planet and said, we've seen enough. And they go, what do you mean? You got nine years and nine, what a dot of millions. They said, well, any society that has profit over the health of their people is insane. Why do we need to look any further? So this is the whole point of the message of non-duality. There's no huge dissertation. It says like the seeker is the sort. Yeah, super simple. You can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. You can't use light to seek light. You can't use mind to seek mind. Self can't get out of self. These things are very cryptic, but they, they cause an avalanche because the knowledge that they're pointing at is already available. It's not new knowledge, yeah? So they don't need a, a ton of snow. They just one yodel and the whole avalanche occurs, yeah? This is the beauty of it. We're not, we're in the know at all times. We just don't know that, yeah? And the thing is, to me, trying to be in the know is pointless. Just look at what, doesn't know that, that's the value. So to me, the value is negation in almost every situation, negating the one that's the prime suspect that always seems to get away with you. Yes. Yeah, so, yes, all right. Anyone else? Paul. Yes, Paul, Saraswati has her hand up, um, and Jill as well. So Saraswati, you just need to unmute. Who? All right. Bring it on. Sarah Swati, yes, if you just unmute. Thanks, Judy. Can't Hi, hear you. Here we go. I'll come a little closer. Hi, hey, Paul. Thanks, Judy. Um, so Paul, um what you you quote from the Course of Miracles, and I, I don't know that book so well. Um and um Sorry, I'll come a little closer. And, you know, I've heard you make this quote so many times. The brain interprets to the body of which it is a part. Yes. So many times. And there's a part of me that completely understands what it means. And then another part of me that completely does not get it, you know. Um, so I, I looked it up, you know, just Googled it and... When I read the um, whole, like just the few sentences, which you've also read, you've read the whole section many times also, because I it was familiar to me, um, mm. but I also didn't understand that <laughs> so well, um, except I got a sense of it. Um, so uh, by listening to it. So I wanted to share with um, all of us that through reading it, I really had a different sense of it. Um, so I just wanted to share that by, for me, by actually reading the words myself. Put the page number. I think I've done it before in the chat and it's yeah. in the, it's the inner light foundation, uh, version yeah. of the, uh, course of miracles. Yeah. Put it in there so they can read it. But every time we do it, which is a few times a year, I read a number of the paragraphs to, uh, demonstrate it. But Would it be okay if I read it now? Hmm? You want to read it now? Yeah. yeah. Sure. If you have time. Everyone have time? Well, go ahead. I think it's a very short reading. It's 496. I mean. 
reason would tell you, and actually last week you um, made a suggestion to use the word wisdom. So, you, we'll yeah. have to, you have to either put up the volume or I'll just, I'll, all these people know, I'll give them the, the, uh, the uh, page and the, and the talk because I've used it for years. Yeah. I'm pretty much almost, but yeah, they can hear it here. They have a here. Can you, how about this? Is that better? Can you hear it now? Go for it. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> Dream it out. All right. Wisdom would tell you that the world you see through eyes that are not yours must make no sense to you. To whom would you, to whom would seeing such as this send back its messages? Surely not you, whose sight is wholly independent of the eyes that look upon the world. If this is not your vision, what can it show you? The that brain, is not you. What can it show to you? All right, go, sorry. <laughs> Couldn't help myself. I understand what you're saying. That's, thank you. The brain cannot interpret what your vision sees. This you would understand. Mm. The brain interprets to the body of which it is part. But what it says you cannot understand. Yet you have listened to it. And long and hard you have tried to understand its messages. Okay, thank you. Well, keep going. Okay. This is the next part. Uh, the very important part of go to the thing and actively denying what you are. Read that one. You have not realized it is impossible to understand what fails entirely to reach you. You have received no messages at all you understand. For you have listened to what you can never communicate at all. I did can never communicate. Yes. Think, then what happens? Denying what you are and firm in faith that you are something else, this something else that you have made to be yourself becomes your sight. Yes. Stop there. Thank you, Paul. And yeah. what page is that, Saraswati? That's yes. So that's called self centeredness. 467. 467. With, we're looking through a lens called self centeredness. So everything we see, we see as pertaining to the body. Yeah, I've read it tons of times. But she does a much nicer job. Saraswati, what I need you to do, because they sure it works better when you say it than me. I want you to record it and we'll use it. <laughs> yeah, actually, I'm going to have, I have a few things from the Course of Miracles. I'll send them to you and then you'll record them in that lovely voice. And uh, I think you and I will be a fucking powerful duo. <laughs> cool. uh, my sense, your voice. No. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. It goes on and on, but then it beats it, you know, you don't want to beat a dead horse. It's, oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> but just stick with, yeah, do you hear that, that there's this something else that we have made to be ourselves? I don't agree with that. I believe the head has made it to be us. I do not believe there's a volition in our own demise. I do not believe it. I believe our demise is mechanical. So I, the way I say it is uh, actively denying what we are and firm in faith in this something else the head has made to be us. That's how I say it. That the other way doesn't work for me. Okay. Yes. So I like to have the mechanical aspect because what happens is people start owning these underlying activities and they're not even aware of them and now they have guilt about shit they don't have no awareness of. You know what I mean? They pile on themselves. It's mechanical. The head 
has its narrative and it wants to present it before you hear another narrative. And so it talks to us as us and it's in the act of denial of what we are and firm in faith in this something else that it has made to be us. And then we live the life of the puppet, so to speak, yeah? Without realizing the puppeteer. So this Course in Miracles is goes on and on about this. And this to me was one of the most beautiful parts because it's negation all the way. It's describing what you're not. So the audience is super clear that the audience is what you are. So the Course of Miracles in this moment is talking to what you are, not what you're not. It's describing what you're not to what, to who? Not to what you're not, but to what you are. So what you are will see I'm not that, yes? This isn't a fight, you know, this, uh, oh man. What you're not becoming a master of the Course of Miracles could be a problem. Yeah. Some people said the Course of Miracles was meant just to use it once and throw it away. Other people have been practicing it for 50 years. Yeah. Remember, the brain interprets the body of which it is a part. This you should know. Simple. Yeah. So... That can apply to all the yapping going on. Don't you see it? You don't have to go into all the specific targets and da-da-da. All the yapping get, gets caught by that statement. The brain was issuing all the yapping. The yapping is based on being interpreted as a body. And so now the body wants to become spiritual? Good fucking luck. Yeah, that's a hard rock to get over, body, to become spiritual, especially as a body. I want to be a body, but I want to be very spiritual. Yeah, now we, we can see that all over the place. Yeah. They've got a left coast Jesus that looks like he just came out, you know, the North Shore in Oahu. <laughs> Surfing. He's fucking <laughs> Arabic. Probably <laughs> some sweat. Yeah, no. Yeah, it's a picture of <laughs> long hair with blue eyes and <laughs> everyone else disqualified. <laughs> it's the body. What takes a path? The spirit take a path, the body takes a path. Okay. What do we call? What do we call there's a spiritual path and a path? Yeah. Some of us, maybe not as much as others, should. So the spiritual path is a path, supposedly, and what takes a path but a body? What the hell? It's it, it, the shit sticks out. It's like giant thumbs in in a in a lawn. <laughs> Before you mow it, take a look. There's these giant thumbs sticking out, just screaming at us. Yeah. That that which we're not is a trying to understand what's going on. It can't. It's got limited faculties. It's defined by a very narrow, myopic view. Everything pertains to a body. Your own condition, your real, not real, but the inherent condition <clears throat> now looks as like a prize to some physical, long-lasting, independent, separate entities. They are in the process of transforming the body into a spiritual body. Yeah. What purifies body? Yeah. Do you, if if you saw a spirit, would some be dirty and some or some completely transparent, but others you could see, ooh, no, pretty much spirit is pure, I would say can't see any blemishes. What's being purified? The body. What can a purifying a body bring great health? Fantastic. Why not have it that? Instead of I'm going to be the, the chariot of the gods and basically heaven is just going to be about what parking space I'm in. I'm just going to enjoy my being in a parking space and forget all of heaven. It's just me. I'm in the parking space of heaven. You know? No, I don't know. It's just, yeah. 
Yeah, simple message. Hey, we got to go. I want to drink a coffee. Yeah, thank you. Hey, everyone. Hey, Martin. Nice to see you. I'm going to send you something. Next Saturday is going to be at the house. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, never again will Marin City be in our event page, probably. So next, and uh, I think you have my house address. It's going to be there next week, and we're going to look for a new place today, actually. I'm going to go to the library, see if we can rent a place. All right, so thank you, everyone. Thanks for everyone uh, hanging out with us. Judy, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. There you are. There I am. Sorry. Right. My pleasure. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, Gary, nice to see you, Gary. Kathleen, <laughs> what is it? Which one is it? Eric Platt in Vista. Hey, Paul, get your, uh, your mailing address. I want to send you a little present. From somebody, get your address. Yeah, I'll send it to you. I'll give it to you now. You want to punch it in? Um, send me yeah. a, just you you. I think you've talked with me. Just send me a message, and I'll yeah, send okay. it to you. Okay. Um, yeah. Great, thank you, Johannes. Nice to see you, Martin. Thank you, Mike Clark, our Mexican friend, Saraswati. Yes, you're going to do my audio book, Saraswati. <laughs> I entered the crack house. <laughs> I saw terrible things. <laughs> All right. Walter, nice. You like that one, Russell. See what you were missing for five years? <laughs> Some good laughs here. Walter, nice to see you. Moochie. Thank you, Paul. You're welcome. Roman Mueller, as always. We got David Bitterman. Thank you so much, David, hanging out with us and uh, driving everyone around the fucking East Coast. And uh, I hope you got the car fixed. <laughs> I hope so. Nice to see you, Dave. Jill G. Nice to see Hello. you. Nice hey. to see you, Dave. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. We got Elon. Nice to see you, Lon. Uh, we got J.A. Jay, I'm going to resurrect those two little books you gave me. I've completely spaced out. I'm going to go <laughs> over them and uh, I'm going to allow, this is what we're going to do. Saraswati, we're going to get the sayings and we'll have Saraswati do the audio book. That's pretty Perfect. good. Perfect. There yeah. it is. Yes. That's good. I'm ready. Zoe. I'll make, I'll make music for the background. And music for the background yeah. production. Yes, very good. <laughs> Zoe, as always, Alan Olson, Jules on vocals, Andre, Fletch, iPad 2, Lindy, Lindy's a chip. Uh, I think that's it. I think I got everybody. I missed the page, but hey, thank you so much. <laughs> the kids. The kids. Thanks, Paul. Thank you, Paul. I can't do it. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yes. Bon voyage. Bye. Bye. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Champagne. We're gonna we're gonna the next meetings are gonna be in Hoboken, New Jersey. Uh, I'll see you guys. See you guys. Bye bye. Mahalo, Paul. Bye everybody.